and welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning, and we're visiting with our friends from the Stark County District Library because there is always so much going on there. We've uh, got Jennifer Walensic and Julia Shaheen both with us. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Always things going on, um, but most recently, uh, this past weekend, we celebrated an anniversary. Uh, Jennifer, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. We celebrated Plains' 10-year anniversary open house. Uh, it was a free family event. We had some live music from the Wanderers and Rust Belt Ramblin'. Um, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think we just want to remind everybody that that is there. We've got uh, Star County District Library is located in several locations. Can you tell us where all we can find you? We are not only at Glen Oak, um, where the where the plane branch is at uh, Schneider. We're at the main library downtown Canton, and um, we have three other city locations in Canton, in Dehoff, Magitz, and the North Branch on 25th Street. And we have our Jackson location, our brand new smart store on Fulton. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Perry Sippo branch, and um, right, we share a property with the, the parks over there on oh, the that's lake. that's right. It's like a vacation spot. It and is. And then we have our East Canton location in the Fult Center and our Sandy Valley branch um, right off of 800. Okay. Way more than I even knew about. So, and yeah, our lake branch. Can't forget our <laughs> lake branch. So. It's up in lake as well. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you're even beyond, or is that still Stark County? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Wow. So you are stretching all the the edges and uh, really, if somebody can't find you, it's their problem, not yours, right? Right, because we also have mobile services that go everywhere in the county. So, <laughs> Traveling smart store. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, the congratulations and happy 10th anniversary for Plain Township. And, of course, that is located on the Glen Oak campus right there on Schneider Road. And uh, we were saying, after you check in and get an audio book, um, what else is there to do there? There's walking tracks, so you can um, check out a book, and an audio book, or check out a music and listen to it as you walk around the track. So perfect. Yeah. We I, also have the Bike Smart, so you can check out a bicycle for the tracks. And that is located there as well. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. It's amazing to me that with a library card, you are able to check out a bicycle and go for a ride. But, and how is that going? It's going well. Yeah. The community really likes it, and and we have a few locations where you can check out a bike so they were just awarded the innovation award from the ohio library council mm -hmm. well congratulations that's wonderful because it is a brilliant idea and we've got to say again thank you tom todd because that came from a fifth grader didn't it or a middle school a middle schooler a yes. middle school child yes student <laughs> <laughs> okay so next we're I think we're all fascinated with our own histories as well, not just the 10-year history of Plains, Stark County Library, but our own personal family histories. And you've got something really fun coming up for that. Let's talk about it. Yeah, Jennifer. Okay, well, coming up on October 29th from 6 p.m. to midnight, we have our seventh annual Digging in the Dark event. It's a genealogy marathon event where we – bring in people of all skill levels to really dig into their family history. Mm -hmm. It's the tent pole event for the genealogy department. It's the what? The tent pole event for the genealogy department. Tell me tent pole event. What it's is like, this? It's our main event every year that we look forward to. Uh, uh, really? Yes. So this is like you've been doing this before? Yeah, this is the seventh this. year. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, now why in the dark? Oh, uh, it's just kind of fun to have an, a lock-in event mm -hmm. where you can leave, but, you know, six hours straight of family history research, it can get pretty intense. You're locked into the library. Yes. At night. Yes. And uh, is there food involved? There is food and prizes and all sorts oh, of fun us, things. Tell us all about it. Well, we've got the McKinley Museum and the DAR are going to be there with information. Um We've got our trained library staff to help with um, new and experienced researchers as they dig into their family history. Mm -hmm. We've got access to databases like Ancestry.com, various Stark, Stark County courthouse records, local histories, newspapers, federal census. I mean, they really can go 
pretty deep into your family history. You're going very far back. If you're talking about the DAR, which um, for folks who might not have heard of them, that's the Daughters of the American Revolution. They take genealogy very seriously. If uh, you're going to be a member, you need to be able to prove that you're a daughter of the American Revolution. And that is going back to the 1700s, obviously. So um, how do we find these kinds of things out? What kinds of services are available at the library? Where do we start? I can start in the genealogy department. It's kind of one of the hidden gems of the library. If you walk in, you can just talk to the Lauren Landis, and she is a wealth of information. She will find out things about you you never knew you needed to know. And how, how do you do that? Because I think sometimes you might have a grandparent's name. You might have heard that, oh, I think they are buried in West Virginia somewhere. Have either of you done this? And can you give us some tips of where to get started in case people would love to do Digging in the Dark on the 29th? Well, I've done a little bit of digging, not mm-hmm. much. Um, but I did, you know, I went to Lauren and her staff and I asked them to help me figure out where uh, my grandparents came from. Um, I knew where they came from, but figure out how to how to find their boat records, their naturalization mm-hmm. papers, their those things. So we use some of our databases. Um, like we have a, a version of Ancestry.com that you can use with your library card at the library. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then some of the other databases and courthouse records that we have, um, they help me figure out, you know, whose names to put in where and, and what um, information to put in. And then we... Um, and then all of a sudden, all these handwritten records from, you know, the early 1900s popped up. So it, it was it's pretty cool what they can find. You have the, they're online or something. Mm-hmm. Handwritten yeah. records have been somehow put online. Somehow they've been digitized so that you can find them online. Boat records, you know, books and, and pages and pages of of records of people coming over through whether it's through Staten Island or some other port. Um um, as they came over from overseas. What are we so. looking for? Boat records is a good one to start with. Are, is sense, do the census, does that help? Um, birth records, marriage records, death certificates? Um, help, help me out here. What all should we be looking for? I, I think all of that helps, yes. uh-huh. depending on what you're looking for. Um, they're the experts, the genealogy staff, <laughs> so they know exactly what they, they know. They have records, they have books, maps, access to databases, all kinds and of things. They mm. collect for records for the entire state of Ohio, as well as surrounding states. Uh, Looks like the District of Columbia, Kentucky, Maryland, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, and now they're a lending library for genealogical records for the Church of Latter-day Saints. Really? So So helping this many people try and find where they come from. What is our fascination with this? I know Ancestry.com has gotten to be extremely popular But you're even offering this same service for free, which is really amazing. So you don't even have to buy a membership. Sorry, Ancestry.com. Just go get your library card and visit you all or Lauren Landis in the genealogy department. When You're right. She's brilliant. Um, Why are we so fascinated with our backgrounds and our ancestors and who we are? I think it goes back to storytelling. We like we like to hear stories. We like history. Um, even if history wasn't your favorite subject in school, you know, learning about where you came from, um, where your family came from, is um, it's fascinating. You know, how they lived, where they lived, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. You said so. you've done a little bit of this. Have you found anything that was surprising for you? Um, not really. Things that I, I I was really interested in finding, like the boat records and and um, when they came over, and um, it was neat to find their naturalization papers and mm. see who signed as witnesses and whatnot, and and to learn how you know my grandparents' best friends really were. You know, they were their neighbors. They were their best friends. They um, did a lot of things together, and you can tell that because they signed off as witnesses or they, you know, they were sponsors or whatnot. So um, that was pretty cool to yeah. find out. So. How far back did you get to go? I just went back to my grandparents. I haven't gone back any further Did you yet, not know so. your grandparents? I did not on my dad's side, no. Wow. I did not, so. Wow. So how nice to be able to actually kind of get to know them this way. Exactly. You know, I've seen pictures, but to, to see because they've written, like, um, in the in the some of the records, they'll write who they came over with, where they were intending to go, who paid for their trip over, what age they came over, um, 
that kind of thing. What Were they a child? Were they a salesperson? What was their occupation? Um, things like that. I've seen pictures, but it was neat to see, you know, mole on left cheek or whatever it was because <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> very similar features and, and whatnot. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of fun, isn't it, to kind of look in the mirror and think, uh, yeah, all exactly. that kind of mixed together and here I am. Exactly. It is fun. And then it, I think it's fun to think of what we'll leave behind someday for the generations to come behind us. You know, I intend to leave a huge footprint. You know, sorry, I know that is not very green, <laughs> but huge footprint. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on with some other things going on now. So digging in the dark, um, we're locked in. We were f- having food and prizes. And what ki- what kinds of, how do you win prizes? Show up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that helps. Um, uh, well, you know, 99% of life is, is showing up. <laughs> It's true. But, um, okay, so there will be prizes, there'll be food, there'll be uh, what kinds of games or if, if you discover something or um, how I, is I that? I think they're going to share working? your your discoveries. I had asked Lauren what were some interesting things that she had found or uncovered over the years during the event. And yes. she said one year she had two people that found out they were cousins oh during the lock-in. Oh, goodness. During the lock in. During the lock in. <laughs> Just random. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I thought yeah. that was pretty neat. Very fun. So, over the seven years, there have been, I'm sure, some discoveries. So, again, yes. this is taking place October 29th at the main branch. Yes, Main in, Library uh, downtown Canton. Okay, from six to midnight. Yes. Okay. And you never know what you're going to find out at exactly. that. Exactly. So fun. All right, every year, the. Um, the Stark County Library and Mayor's Commission, I think, the Literacy Commission, I think, get together. Um, um, the Mayor's Literacy Commission dissolved a couple of years ago, but um, we were a part of that when it when it was mm-hmm. around. And, and the Mayor's Literacy Commission actually started um, doing the One Book, One Community program. So um, just a couple of years ago, the Stark County District Library took over as um, the library that puts, you know, uh, takes lead on it, mm-hmm. and um, we work with the other libraries in the county, um, so several of the independent libraries, um, as well as our own branches and locations, to put together um, a month-long series of events that all go together with one book or one common theme. So, and What a cool idea, because when you get everybody kind of reading the same book, everyone in town reading the same book, you can have the uh, fun conversations that are the formal uh, conversations that you all design in those formal events, but you also can be talking over the water cooler. Exactly. You know, it, where everybody can be talking about the same book. It's like everybody on the same page, literally. Exactly. That's. I think that's the whole point of One Book, One Community. It's a nationally recognized program, and um, it, it was started um, in in the late 90s, um, and it it just brings people together to talk about one common thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can set aside all your differences and talk about talk about the book and whether you liked it or not. And maybe you have differences on a, an opinion yeah. on the books, but it, you know you're talking about something that you've all read. So um, and we bring people here. We bring people together through book discussions, and um, as well as as programs that are based on the theme. So okay. Um, so tell us what this year's one book is. So this year's one book is Gaining Ground by Forrest Pritchard. And um, we chose a secondary read as well for younger readers called Seed Folks by Paul Fleshman. Um, but Gaining Ground is, is the, where we we came up with the, the main themes and the main programs. Um, so it's, it's Forrest's book. It's his biography about how he... Um, took his family's farm from growing uh, corn and soybeans and trying to make a living on it and realizing that, um, you know, five truckloads of, of corn got him $18.16 at the end of the season. Mm. And you can't make a living off of that, can't unfortunately. On that. So, no. No. so he um, decided after college he really wanted to make a go of the farm and make it work again because um, it had been in his family for, for talking about genealogy for, yes. for a long, long time. So um, he decided he wanted to uh, make a go of it. And, you know, he got his parents involved and they all decided let's let's go the route of 
growing grass. Let's make that <laughs> our <laughs> let's make that our crop. We're going to grow grass and we're going to uh, make a cattle farm and do grass fed beef. So and this was a this was a time um, before you know farm to table was a big deal and Whole Foods and and all of the organic grocery stores were were a thing. Like yes. they are now. Yes. So, um, you know, he was trying to make a go of it long before that became mainstream. So, so. interesting. The book is called Gaining Ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, Forrest Pritchard is going to join us after these words. You're listening to Our Community. <laughs> 